Hello, welcome back to the fish locker out on the beach at night. Now following the success of our last nighttime foraging video, this is the first set of decent tides that we have had since then. I have also got my trusty UV light. It is, it is a nice calm night at the moment. We have got a little bit of wind but we're on a sheltered bit of beach. We might get some rain later on. Let's cross our fingers and hope that doesn't happen. I am out on the rocks on my own at night. So I am going to be wearing my life jacket. Safety first. Also, my wife knows where I am. She knows what time I got here. She knows what time I'm going to leave. And a friend of mine does as well. And I'm going to text them when I'm leaving. So they know that if they haven't had a text by a certain time, to either phone me or to come and look for me. You need to be safety first. I have my new chocolate foraging bucket. Unfortunately my last one was a clear one. I had that one for ages. Um, I took my little lad foraging with it and he, um, well, he threw it on the rocks and broke it. <laughs> and I have my trusty spear, Brittany. We will go and see what we can find in the rock poles, in the rocks and um, yeah, there we go. Let's go and see what we can find. Straight away in all these pools, there is an awful lot more green weed than there was the last time we come out. The clarity is still great. There are stacks of crabs just cutting about the place. There's a shore crab. Uh, look. That there. Some wire weed. You've got some Irish moss and some serrated rack. Oh, there's a little velvet swimming crab. A nice little strawberries and enemy. Some more little crabs look just cutting about the place. There they are. Just behind this rock. Now, I will come back and I will spend a bit more time looking through these rock poles. But while the tide's ebbing off, I want to get down there towards where the water line is and see if we can find anything in the bigger rocks and crevices. They're just everywhere. You need to be really careful when you're walking over the rocks like this because the seaweed is like ice. You will end up on your backside in no time at all. Oh, there's a nice, there's a nice enemy. Let's see what that guy looks like under the UV light. Oh, <laughs> just seen a crab under there. Bright red. But I don't know if you can see them little glowing things. There is a crab under here. I'll try and show it you. Next to this, Strawberries and enemy that you can see there. You see the strawberries and enemy? Where's the crab gone? <laughs> oh, I've lost it. Oh, there he is. Look. He's just an edible crab. Look, I'll show you. <laughs> Right, here is a velvet swimming crab. See what he looks like under the UV light. It's glowing green, isn't he? Right, the areas that we're looking for, as you can, when you're looking around, is you're looking for little holes, little cracks and crevices. And I don't know if you can see you up in that one there. There is an edible crab. That strawberry's an enemy there. Wait and watch this. Let's get our UV light on that. How crazy is that? And there's your crab glowing green at the back. 
this needle and mallet. And that star of city in there is glowing as well. It is so cool. There are some little tiny fish in these pools. I don't know if I can get close to them, but that is a massive velvet shrink up there, see? That is a massive velvet swimming crab. If you can see all those little tiny fish there, they're all baby pollock. Oh, by the shape. The area that I'm heading to, this is an area that I've foraged before. So I have got a good idea of where there might be something hiding. <laughs> it's just difficult to find it on a night when you can't get your bearings. The water is beautifully clear. Oh, there's another velvet swim crab running around. There's actually a heron down there. Right, looking in this rock pool here, you can see we have some lovely anemones. And a couple of crabs. See one there? A little one running about the back. But I don't know if you can see these. See them there? Right, watch what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna switch to the UV light. Now can you see them? Incredible, aren't they? You wouldn't even know they were there. I think they're called a gem anemone. Also, look at the crab. How cool does he look? Just not bothered, is he? But yeah, those anemones are lovely. See, you can't even see them. We've got some lovely bits in here. I don't know if you can see those little prawns down there. See their eyes shining back. Some rainbow rack. The plush stuff is called sea lettuce. Got some Irish moss. And I've just seen a cheeky velvet swing crab there, look. Right, we'll see what he looks like with the UV light. The prawns as well glow back green. Cheeky little prawn. I don't know how well you'll be able to see them in there. There are a lot of little fish in there. You can see them. And they are smelt. Probably sand smelt. Too many torches and not enough hands. Looking down here, can you see him hiding at the back there? Little edible crab, that's what you're looking for. There's another one up there. You're just looking for the little holes. There's a lobster. A massive lobster. I've just seen it retreat into its cave. Yeah. Just seen it retreat. I hope you saw it in the video. Could you, you just see an antenna poking out? You just see it waving around? Yeah, he's big as well. I'm going to have to be quick because tide's coming in. Right, let's get Brittany. I'm hoping to just show you him because he keeps popping out. Just to see his claws. I'm saying he. 
They are massive, them claws. I'm thinking it's got to be a male. I can't get the camera much closer. There, can you see it? Right. That is the biggest lobster I think I've ever seen. Water's coming up. I have to empty my pockets or I'm going to get absolutely drenched. Can't get it. It's too, too much water in the hole. Look at the size, oh my, look at the size of that. My God, it nearly broke me, oh it nearly broke me getting it out of there, holy moly. Oh, sorry, look at the size of that claw. <laughs> I was literally in the hole, like I'm drenched. Look how much, how much water's coming out of me, really. I'm absolutely drenched and I, I couldn't get it out with a spear. So I literally had to put my hand in on top and I could feel his claw. And I just got hold of his claw like that. It's got to be a male. Got to be a male. Yeah. Water's come right in. Look. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know what to say about that. His claw alone must weigh a pound. Oh, look at this. Look at this well here. <laughs> I, I just can't stop laughing. Look at the size of it. Look at the size of that claw. I, I wouldn't even know what his measure was. Legal landing size in my area is 90 millimeters on the back. Look, I'm shaking. <laughs> he is. Over 125. Christ. Look at the size of this claw. It's three inches across and it's seven inches long. That's just one claw. Look at the size of it to my fist. Holy moly. That is so much special. And that hole now, that hole now is full of water. I just made it here in time. Right, first couple of things. You can tell it's a male because he's got a narrow tail. And when you look at underneath, this part here, where my thumb is, those two white dots. You can see he's a male because of the size of that great clonking claw. I honestly, I, I thought I'd found a big one like a couple of trips ago, but crikey. <laughs> He's not, he, no chance is he going to get in this bucket. Look at that. What am I going to do with him? 
right tide's probably coming that hole's completely full now if i hadn't got here a minute when i did i wouldn't have had him out of there let's go and make our way down here and see if we can find somewhere else oh i absolutely wasn't expecting to get to that hole there just because i didn't think the tide was going to go up far enough and it literally was just enough so if we can make our way through this stoneweed it just creates like a carpet and it's deadly to walk on loads of little prawns in these rock pools little prawns and fish you can see them darting at you I hope you can see their eyes shining back they're just like little tiny diamonds We have had a lot of rough weather. Oh, there's a little crab. We have had a lot of rough weather. So there is a lot of dislodged weed around. Filling up a lot of the rock pools. Weed's grown a lot since I was here last time and it's making everything difficult to walk on. All of these pom-pom weeds are past their best now. Where's my UV lamp? See if we can't find anything with that. Right. This is going to be something special here. Green snake locks an enemy. Now look at it. Aren't they just incredible? It's just a simple UV light Incredible See if there's anything else to be seen There's a massive velvet swimming crab And he's off. Beautiful vivid greens and blues. Uh, these poles are all a little bit too full. Getting uh, really difficult to see anything with all this stoneweed. It's just massively taken over. To be honest, I'm not too worried about going over my wellies because they're already full of water. Just lots of shrimps. I'm not sure what to do with this guy because I, I literally I. Can I get him all in the bucket? And I am reluctant to eat him. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. I come past this little crevice here and I thought I'll have a quick look in there. And it, it was just a little cave like that, look. And it had this guy in it. He's only little, I say he. No, it's a she. A little female. Well undersized, you can see by the size of it, it's tiny. But I was just just hidden up in that hole there. And just used me my spear to pull it out. But yeah, a little tiny female. Rain's just held off enough now <laughs> that I'll be able to put camera on. But to show you oh, to show you the difference between the two. the size difference in fact his claw is, is the same size as this little lobster here let's put let her go back up in there and put him back in here go on love you can go back in there now that's where she was she was just hidden up in that hole there just come along and was just 
Just scanning about. You can go back in. We'll leave a bit. Tide will be on her in a second. Now, I promise we are going to van now. <laughs> this rainbow rack is incredible, and it is everywhere in this spot. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's called Rainbow Rack. Oh, there's a little fish there, look. You know what I mean? That actually looked like a little tiny bass. Only about that big. Oh, look at them little guys. Didn't even see them. We didn't even see those there, did we? Oh, and that prone. Or this egg. There's a bullhouse egg case, look. Didn't even see that there. Till I got the UV light on it. I don't know how well you can see this, but you see that little entrance there. There is a lobster underneath that. I know because I've just seen it just walking past. Yeah, I can just to say see like the fan of its tail. You see the blue there, look. Now I don't know how it's in there. I'm gonna have a look around the rock. See, I'll find out how she got in because there's definitely a lobster under there. Right, well, as you can see, it's it's raining. Um, the tide, the tide is flooding in now. I, to be honest, I got here a little bit late. I should have been here three quarters of an hour earlier, and then I could have had more time in around the rocks. There's been an awful lot more weed growth, so it was quite difficult to navigate over the rocks, and it took me quite a while to get to get him out now he's just he's absolutely blown me away this guy honestly I've never seen out like them claws they're just monstrous aren't they the size of it you're going to be a nuisance aren't you I'm going to go back in that bucket Right, you just stay there a second. I had a, <laughs> had a hell of a drama getting him out of there. It was, uh, I don't know how well it'll show on the camera, but I hope it does. I could just to say see his claws sticking out, and it was, he's in a, it was in a bit of a cave that was underwater. So I couldn't, if I could, if it, if it had been dry, I'd have been able to get my head down there and see it, but I had to do it all just kind of by feel. And then when he got to the back of the cave and started stirring the bottom up, couldn't see anything. I kept trying. To, I was using my spear, kept trying to stick the kept trying to stick the spear in, get it behind him and try and wiggle him out. And I kept getting hold of it on the end. I kept getting hold of the spear and then I'd drag him out a little bit and he'd let go. So I even turned it round and I tried to use the wood end. I don't know how well you can see but there's like a big dent in there now where he's had hold of it. And then that wasn't working and the water was coming up and my wellies are full of water and I was I was thinking I can't I can't lose this now. I knew it was an absolute monster. So uh, possibly foolishly I had to go in with my hands. So I just I put the, the spear in into the cave. I felt one as soon as he got older with his claw and I pushed it to the roof of the cave. So I pinned his claw to the roof of the cave and I just kind of slid my hand in until I could feel it. Twice and nearly got my fingers. Slid my hand around slid my hand around the back of that big claw and managed to get hold of it because they haven't they haven't got an awful lot of power when you to to open so I held its claw shut on that one and then uh, managed to kind of wiggle it out a little bit and then I got my other hand in and just got hold of both of its claws and just gently wiggled it out you can't pull too hard because they can shed their claws so just wiggled it out and yeah miracle <laughs> 
I, uh, I've been thinking long and hard what I want to do with him. Like a, a lobster like that, it's incredible. I mean, I, like I say, I've been doing this a long time. I've never seen one that big on the shore before. I've, I've seen them in the pots. I mean, I've never caught one personally in my pots around here, but when I was working commercially, I've seen them that big pot before. But um, lobsters, they've got quite a fast growth rate when they're young, and then when they get bigger, like the size of him, it slows down a lot. So the ones that you normally see around about minimum landing size, they're maybe five, six, seven years old. He might be older than I am. Like if you get him, get him to, I think he's probably about four, five pound. I mean that claw alone weighs probably a pound. He'll be 30 years old. He's, um, he's not for the pot. I can't, can't in all good conscience take him for the pot. But what I, what I am going to do, what I'm going to try and do, is a friend of mine is a marine biologist. And there is a hatchery, there is a lobster hatchery in Cornwall. What I'm going to try and do is I'll see if they'll take him. Because what, what, <laughs> what better retirement would that be than having a, like a dozen female lobsters that you get to mate with and then he's an absolute brute you can, there's no denying that he's got like a fantastic genes and he must be smart enough to have survived this long so I think he would be um, a perfect candidate for the next generation of lobsters the hatchery what it does is it, it um, keeps females buried hens in a controlled environment and then when, when they release their eggs they take them all and then rear them on and then release them into the area so I will um, I will take him and I will see if they will take him and if not if not what I'll do is I will um, I'll put a couple of V-notches in and then we'll take him and release him because he's um, it's it, it's a bad thing I, I kind of feel responsible for him he's, I mean even though it's it's an animal even though it, it's, a, it's some people can say it's just a lobster I kind of feel responsible for him now I can't I can't in all good conscience let him go because if um, if he ends up in a commercial pot someone might take him if he ends up in a net he might end up losing his claws he might die he might, that's what we'll do. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Um, we'll take him, and if the hatchery will take him, that'll be perfect because that'll be opportunity for him to um, improve fish stock, improve lobster stocks. If they can't take him for whatever reason, I think what we'll do is we'll V-notch him and we'll take him out in the boat to a safer area, and then we will uh, we'll let him go. But yeah, fantastic. <laughs> right, we're almost back to the van. And I said we'd have a look at this guy in a rock pool with a UV light. Look at the size of them claws. Right. Where's the UV light? God, it's like cracking. Just an absolute leviathan, isn't he? If I told you where this beach was, where I've just found this lobster, <laughs> you wouldn't believe me. He's pretty cool, isn't he? Well, the little crab there is just that fright of his life. Right, unfortunately, we've had to have a little bit of a change of plan. The lobster that we found on the shore, the huge male lobster, the size of that claw. I had intended on taking him to the, ha the lobster hatchery in Padstow where they take healthy lobsters and they breed them in a controlled environment and then release all of the young lobsters into the local area. They would have loved him. Unfortunately, at the moment, with all the coronavirus problems, everyone there has been furloughed off. So they weren't able to take him. 
and then I even spoke to a local aquarium to see if they could house him for a little while and let things get, get back to normal. Unfortunately, they were all furloughed off as well. So what we've decided to do is we're going to V-notch him and then we're going to release him. Now V-notches, I've covered them in several of my other videos before and what they are is, I'll show you real quickly with this guy. Healthy breeding lobsters are often marked with a V in either this tail fan or that tail fan. And there is a bylaw protecting them. So a lobster with a V-notch in its tail cannot be landed. That ensures that there is a healthy breeding stock on the ground at all times. When they get to this size, I mean a lobster this size, we worked it out, is probably between 40 and 50 years old. Lobsters can live to be 100 years old, so this lobster's older than I am. I couldn't in all conscience keep it, and if we couldn't take it to somewhere where it could it could benefit the rest of like the lobster lobster population, like the hatchery, then we're definitely just gonna let it go. By putting a V in its tail, which is simply a V like that. A lobster this size won't shed its shell for probably three or four years, and it takes two or three sheds before the shell, before the V-notch will grow out. So by V-notching this guy, we could be protecting him for possibly 15 to 20 years. It's incredible, isn't it? All we do, and it doesn't hurt them, this is just, if you can feel it, it's just a hard exoskeleton. <laughs> just like having your toenails cut. And all you would do is you just, in the middle of, if you're going to V-notch lobsters, never ever V-notch this central one because part of its nervous system runs down the center. So V-notching this one here is fine. Oh. Hold still, hold still. What did you call him, James? Pinchy Danos. Pinchy Danos. See, look, it's cut a perfect V in that tail fan. Put the bit off it, pulled off. Yeah, there it is. That is the piece that was taken out. You can see, look, it's just a shell. James has named this guy Pinchy Thanos. I'm assuming because of this huge, huge claw. Look at the size of it. You really wouldn't like that attached to you, would you? His cutter claw, though, has been a little bit deformed on the end. As I've pointed out in a few of our other videos, they have a big claw, a crunching claw, which they get hold of things, and they have a little serrated one, which they cut it up with. Right. Just like before with that one, all you do is flip like that. And it just takes a perfect little V out of the tail. Now you can see the two perfect Vs. One there, one there. Ready. There you can see the V notches in his tail. Can you say bye, James? Bye. Bye, bye Benji Thanos. Look at the size of him. He's right. Sweet. Stay away from those pots. Yep. I was wondering if he was going to flap, but he'll probably just drift straight down. Look. Yep. Bye. Bye. It's that way to that big claw. <laughs> right, well we've, we've just said goodbye to Pinchy Thanos. It was, um, I don't regret letting a big lobster like that go at all. Something that size, of that age, that's that healthy, is only going to do good for the community, good for the, the lobster population. Especially with a couple of V-notches in it. You will, um, you will see us take several things to the table and you'll see us let several things go. I hope through, um, through showing people that there are conservation methods out there, like the V-notching, that people will be um, probably more inclined to um, adopt the practice themselves. And what do we say now? And say bye from the fish locker. Bye from the fish locker.